Hey, let's take a minute and go through the electrical circuit diagram for our install. I want to do that as a part of the overview here before you start installing all the electrical equipment to have a better understanding of why you're installing the equipment and how it's going to eventually be all wired up together towards the end of this course. As a part of your resources, you have some drawings and one of them is this electrical schematic. We're going to take a look at this now. I'm just going to walk you through it to make sure you have a sense of what you're installing when you're doing the electrical install. We've got our array up here. Now this has been installed during the array installation course. We have two strings, a string of eight modules up here, uh, string one, and another string of eight modules down here, string two. Physically that's the 16 modules on the roof that you installed in array installation. Let's go from there and trace down the, the wiring that we're going to be installing. So those two strings ended up with their two sets of positives and negatives right here ready to go, sort of dangling in the air. I can go through that uh, circuit diagram in a minute a little more closely. But we're going to pick up here because in electrical install we're going to install the array junction box. So the whole purpose of the array junction box is to be a physical transition from these wires kind of floating in air into conduit that can somehow get down to the ground and get to the inverter. So there's many different types of array junction boxes, but the point is that we we make up these jumpers right here. You're actually going to make these wires. That's going to be outdoor rated wire. Then you're going to use a connector that's going to allow you to connect from this outdoor rated wire into indoor rated wire that can be pulled in conduit. And then here's the conduit right here. And this conduit's the long run. So this is going to go all the way across the roof and all the way down the wall. So the electrical wires are going to be pulled all the way across the roof, all the way down the wall, and somehow get to your inverter. So we show the inverter here as a single box. There's more video on that in, by itself. But the idea is that there's an upper portion here that actually is the electronics for the inverter converting DC to AC. And then down here, this is the detail of the DC disconnect switch part of the inverter. That's what we're going to wire up. And notice that we've got string two positive with two pieces of tape and string one positive with one piece of tape coming in on the left hand side and then string two and string one negatives coming in on the right hand side. So these are the terminals on the left hand side of the inverter. You're actually going to wire those in. Uh, you also bring down a ground wire up on up at the array. The ground wire is just bare copper connecting the rails and everything together but then it transitions into a uh, regular green ground wire that's brought down in the conduit. That ground wire is connected to the uh, grounding bar that's inside the inverter. Then once the inverter does its magic and converts DC electricity from the modules into AC, this is the side on the right side where we're going to take that power out. And there's these two lines called L1 and L2. Uh, each one is 120 volts. Together it makes 240 volts and that's typical for residential US wiring. Then there's also a neutral which basically is at zero which is the neutral between the L1 and L2. And there's also a ground wire. So these four wires on the AC side are going to be pulled out and run in conduit right over here next door to a revenue grade meter. I have a separate video on that as well. It explains a bit more. But the point is that's going to count the amount of uh, AC electricity that the inverter outputs. It's a one-way meter. It's not both ways. It's just one way. And notice that the wiring comes in from the inverter. It comes in on the top. That's important. We're going to put those wires in on the top. They're going to flow through the meter and flow out of the bottom. And that's going to count continuously the AC kilowatt hours that you make. The neutral wire is just going to go straight through. The neutral wire doesn't land inside the revenue grade meter. So we're just going to carry that on through. Then the wiring from the revenue grade meter goes through some short conduit and goes into your AC disconnect. Now, this is your main point of disconnection from the solar system to the house. And this is typically required by the utility. In order to be safe, when their guys are working out there, they're going to want to be able to manually disconnect your solar system from the house so that you don't accidentally feed power into their grid when they're working on it. So it's got a a manual lockable visible disconnect switch out here that they can flip down and lock out. Now the wiring comes in from the revenue grade meter and then goes on to the main service panel. Now the main service panel came with the house. We don't install that. 
and it also came with its own main breaker. We don't install that either. That came with the house. What we get to install is this one, the solar breaker. And it's a two-pole breaker for L1 and L2. It's a 240-volt breaker that we're going to install in the house to handle the solar circuit. Now let's go back for a minute and notice something here. That the L1 and L2 go into the main service panel are on the top. That's important because when you flip the switch, the top wires in any big switch like this always stay hot. It's the bottom part wires that are disconnected and go dead. And it's important to know that, that the utility is typically always hot and the wires inside the switch, even if you s turn the switch off, these wires remain dangerously hot because they're directly connected to the utility. The only way to make that safe would be to turn off the solar breaker, which is what you do if you're doing troubleshooting. Let's take a moment, go back up here to the array and look at a closer diagram. One of the other diagrams that we have for you is this uh, optimizer detail. Now the idea is that in this install we're installing optimizers. So we have the junction box from the module. Every module has its own junction box where it's got it's, got its wires coming out. But then we're going to install optimizers along the rails and mount the modules there. So each module is connected to an optimizer. And this is exactly the way that we have it wired up. So we show it to you carefully here, where the male and female MC4 connectors from the optimizer connect to the module. That's what's done here. And then you've got these connections right here that connect optimizer to optimizer to optimizer. And remember, we've got eight of them here. Physically, this array is long. You know, it's many feet long. So at the end here, the final wire from this optimizer can be this wire, which goes right out here. But how do we get to the other module? We have to install a jumper. So we make a jumper wire and we're going to install that. And that jumper wire connects to the optimizer here and that goes along the rail and it's about you know 20 some odd feet long. That wire moves all the way along and brings that end of the string right here to the array junction box. The other string which is physically down lower needs two jumpers because physically now there's like five six feet here and 20 some odd feet here. So this final optimizer needs its own jumper to be connected here, run along those uh, rails and bring the power up that way. And then this other jumper B goes all the way from the farthest module away, runs along the rails, comes up here, and it's going to bring the power in. So in our system, we have two strings and we're going to actually need three jumpers to be installed to bring that wire into the junction box. So I just wanted to go through that kind of outline to give you a sense of the electrical components that we're going to install and the kind of wiring that we're going to pull in between them. Uh, we have some more videos that go over each one of these components individually. Hey, thanks for watching the training video using Interplay's simulation based training program. You can keep watching our solar videos by clicking on the link to your left or stay up to date on our latest solar snacks by subscribing on your right. To learn more about how the STP provides critical team training and helps you build an onboarding program at your company, please go to interplaylearning.com.